Thank you so much and uh, good afternoon everyone. Um, it's an honor to be here after these fabulous days that we've had together and to be able to speak a little um, about future visions and conclusions. Uh, I would like to start with a quote that was um, said by Haman Sahal in one of the plenaries yesterday, uh, which begins with, it's not difficult to do the right thing, but it's difficult to know what is right. And I believe that the only way of knowing what is right is through trying. So I will talk a little bit about a workshop that we had before this conference. It's a collaboration between my organization, SWEDEST, which is the Swedish International um, Center for Education for Sustainable Development. It's very long. That's why the acronym SWEDEST. And we're based in Sweden and working uh, with other countries for a sustain more sustainable education. Uh, and it's a collaboration. This, this workshop was the initial starting point for a collaboration that will stretch for a longer period. And it's involving uh, CEE and partner organizations for CEE here in India. It's involving WESA from Southern Africa. And it's also involving uh, um, the University of Jönköping in Sweden, which is working on teacher training and teacher education. So what we're doing is we're developing a joint program to strengthen each other and share each other's experiences. And uh, we've named the program ESSA, Ecosystem Services, Strong Sustainability and Agency, Learning for Change. So what we've done is we've discussed a little bit about ecosystem services and how important these basic um, systems are that provide us with our, our livelihoods, fresh air to breathe. I won't go through it, uh, this diagram now, but to me it's very important because this is the very basis of, of all life on Earth and especially for us humans that we take care of these ecosystem services. And the diagram that you have in front of you is from the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment, which was produced and released in 2005. We're also talking about sustainability and what is sustainable. Um, a lot of the, the lifestyles today is about economic growth and how much I can have in my wallet. Uh, we've now started to realize that we have to minimize our impacts on the planet and we've moved um, to the right in this schedule uh, um, to try and minimize the impacts, but it's still sort of trying to solve the problem. So what we have to do is to move across this threshold of, of proactive acting and actually working for strong sustainability. It's a vision and it will always be a vision that we have to keep on working for but at least we have to move across this threshold where we don't consider um, how much we have in our wallets, how much money we have, uh, the prime subject for, for our livelihoods. We have one planet, we have uh, shared resources that we all have to care for. And within that society and economy comes. We're also discuss discussing in this program how we can do all this, and it's through action. We have to take actions. And what ESD challenges is that you cannot simply transform or transfer, rather, uh, knowledge from one head to another. You have to incorporate it into your being. And that is um, needed for collectives, our societies, but also for the individual. And that is, uh, I believe, what, what is needed for a transformation of society and to move into more sustainable practices. So what does this mean for education? What we found out during this workshop is that even though we have slightly different systems in Sweden, India and Southern Africa, we still face the same challenges. So what we would like to do is to share our experiences and strengthen each other's work in this. And I think that's also where the Earth Charter comes in as uh, a framework for the ethical or the ethics of our work. Um, bringing together disciplines within teaching with the framework of sustainability and the Earth Charter as ethical principles. So what we also did was 
we tried to simplify this sustainability work and this is an example of this. It's a closed ecosystem. These plants will live for several years in here, closed because of the natural system within the bottle. And it's a simplified system that can be used for starting to discuss very complex questions. Uh, so we, through that, also discussed um, through a method that's been uh, developed by a colleague of mine, Wolfgang Brunner, the spaceship, where you have the question of what will you bring if you are to spend 6,000 years in a, space a closed spaceship? What resources do you need? And that's where we have to start discussing also the, the resources that we have, how we can make them last for, for generations to come. And those are, of course, similarities with our planet. So our biosphere is huge but it's not uh, enormous, so to look after it is the future vision and I think that we can do this together in this collaboration. It's of course CEE, which I also would like to extend my extreme and very humble thanks to for letting us have this workshop here, to Kartikeya and to Shivani, um, Carol and Prita who helped us do this. Um, the partner organizations, Silicon City, Regional Science City, MS University of Baroda and the Government School of Raipur will together do a joint project in India and help develop that together. Uh, in Southern Africa, WESA will do the same and the third node will be the School of Education and Communication in Jönköping, Sweden. And Swedish will be assisting in this to try and keep this network going, to assist as much as we can um, and if you have any questions about this or anything you would like to contribute or share with us or maybe even take part, please feel free to contact me. Thank you very much.